coming up on today's episode of Airborne Unlimited. NASA says Mars has water. Bonhomme wins Fort Worth Red Bull race. The Boeing KC-46A takes flight. I'm Brie Cross, it is September 29th, 2015, and this is Airborne Unlimited. NASA revealed yesterday that liquid water has been found on the surface of Mars, upending the perception of Mars as a completely arid desert-like planet. A study published in the journal Nature Geoscience identified waterlogged molecules taken from readings from orbit. Researchers say that the recent discovery indicates that there is some sort of briny water on Mars, but they don't yet know where it's coming from. Lizendra Oha, a researcher from Georgia Tech, who worked on the paper, said in a statement, quote, Something is hydrating these salts, and it appears to be these streaks that come and go with the seasons. This means the water on Mars is briny rather than pure. It makes sense because salts lower the freezing point of water, end quote. While today's discovery is huge, it is small compared to the rivers, lakes, and vast oceans that are believed to have flowed on Mars billions of years ago. The findings, however, are a boon for a future human mission to Mars, since the existence of water could help lighten astronauts' load. Paul Bonham won his fourth Red Bull Air race of the season on Sunday in Fort Worth with a sensational performance, but Australia's Matt Hall stayed right on his heels in the championship battle with a solid second-place finish. Japan's Yoshi Moroyo got his second podium of the season with a third-place finish, saving his best flying of the weekend for the moment when it counted the most in the Final Four race. Bonham was invincible in the racetrack and said he was absolutely thrilled to get his 19th career victory in front of a big Texas crowd of more than 30,000 spectators at the famous NASCAR racetrack. Going into the final race of the season in Las Vegas on October 18th, Bonham leads the championship with 67 points after getting 12 for the win in Fort Worth, while Hall is still within striking range on 59 points. Bonham said, quote, it was really hard work today and we put a lot of hard work into winning this. He added, let's see what happens in Vegas, end quote. After the break, the new Boeing tanker takes flight. AML's patent-pending wireless induction charging system eliminates confusion over those charging cables, cuts down cockpit cable clutter, and allows you and your passengers to fly cordless and eliminate the cable nightmare. www.aviationmodificationleaders.com There's a difference between charting a steady course and pushing for the ceiling. And for nearly a century, Hartzell Propeller has been defining that difference. It's in our passion for engineering and research and our dedication to testing the limits of performance. We are built on honor. We are Hartzell Propeller. Redbird is quickly becoming the industry standard for flight training. Since Redbird introduced its revolutionary FMX in 2007, colleges, universities, and flight training operations around the world have integrated Redbird products into their curriculum. It's time to discover what Redbird can do for you. Join the migration. Welcome back. If you have a story suggestion for Airborne Unlimited, Aero TV, our website, or podcast, just email to news-spy at aero-news.net. Boeing's legacy of providing the U.S. Air Force with aerial tankers continues as the first Boeing 767 configured as a KC-46A tanker flew for the first time late last week. This was the first flight of a KC-46A tanker configured aircraft following ongoing flights of the program's first test aircraft, a 767-2C. During the flight, Boeing test pilots performed operational checks on engines, flight controls, and environmental systems, and took the tanker to a maximum altitude of 35,000 feet prior to landing. The Boeing team is now conducting post-flight inspections and calibrating instrumentation prior to the next series of flights, during which the tanker boom will be deployed. Before the end of the year, the KC-46 will begin conducting aerial refueling flights with a number of U.S. Air Force aircraft. Overall, Boeing plans to build 149 KC-46 aircraft for the U.S. Air Force. Every Tuesday, we're going to look ahead at some of the more interesting events in the aviation universe. Here is this week's Aero Calendar. Mm -hmm. 
October 2nd through the 4th marks a big one in California. It's called the California Capital Air Show and is being held at the Mather Airport in Sacramento. You'll see the Air Force Thunderbirds jet demonstration team, Royal Canadian Forces Snowbirds, and the United States Navy FA-18 Super Hornet, and that's just the tip of the iceberg, for their 10th anniversary show. Now we head east to the Military Aviation Museum located at Virginia Beach Airport in Virginia. On October 3rd and 4th, they're holding an event they call Biplanes and Triplanes. You'll see World War I and World War II airplanes and be able to experience the thrill of a lifetime during a flight in an authentic World War II aircraft. The 11th Annual Jasper Air Show is being held October 3rd in Jasper, Texas. Coming back to the show this year is the World War II B-25 bomber Devil Dog. Internationally known aerobatics performer Skip Stewart will be flying his spectacular routine in Prometheus and World War II warbirds will fly the sky. Reno Air Racer Stuart Dawson will also be there flying his Hawker Sea Fury and more. October 2nd through the 4th brings us the Old School Fly-In and Air Show No. 9, located at Ranger Airfield, which is just two miles south of Ranger, Texas. Old School Fly-In and Air Show No. 9 is commemorating 104 years of Ranger Airfield. Seven air show performers are scheduled for this event on the friendly 3,400-foot turf runway. Camping on site is available. After these messages, Naseo selects a new leader. The KSN 770 is an affordable, WAS-enabled, integrated MFD with a flexible hybrid user interface from Bendix King. Get your fingers on the 770's perfect blend of touchscreen and hard buttons. Easily control your GPS navigation, navcom, weather, traffic, and terrain in any condition. For more information, go to BendixKing.com. Concord's recombinant gas RG series sealed battery technology produces a high performance battery with the advantages of being pre-tested and fully charged at the factory. Find out more about Concord's entire line of batteries at www.concordbattery.com. Concord, the heart of your aircraft. Now certified, Aspen Avionics single band ADS-B, ATX-100 and ATX-100G transceivers are the next gen ADS-B solution that provides the features pilots need while keeping flyaway costs low. Check it out now at AspenAvionics.com. Sandia introduces the new SAI 340 Quattro TSO'd airspeed, attitude, altitude and slip with integral backup battery safety never looked so good. See it now at www.sandia.aero. Welcome back. With so much news coming out of the aviation industry, we're summarizing some other interesting stories in a brief segment we call Around the Patch. <music> Members of the National Association of State Aviation Officials have selected a new chairman of the Board of Directors for 2016. Gary Cathy, who has been a member of NASEO since 2009 and has served as vice chairman, has accepted the position. Less than one year after delivering the first A350 XWB900, the first A350-1000 is taking shape. The assembly of the first fuselage major components are now taking place at Airbus plants in Hamburg and St. Nazaire. United Launch Alliance and Orbital ATK have announced a long-term strategic partnership. Orbital ATK will become the sole provider of solid rocket boosters for ULA's Atlas V and Vulcan launch vehicles. This becomes effective in 2019. A remotely piloted aircraft training academy will be established in Grand Forks, North Dakota. According to a news release, General Atomics Aeronautical Systems has signed a 10-year lease on the site. Flight crew training is planned to begin early next year. Master Instructors has designated its inaugural class of 10-time Masters. The achievement marks 20 years of participation in the Master Instructor Continuing Education Program. The three instructors comprising the first group are Pat Knight, Ed Fink, and Dave McKinney. Well, that's our trip around the patch. Now let's move on to the rest of the news. Duncan Aviation is celebrating the 15th anniversary of the opening of its first engine rapid response team location. Fifteen years ago, Duncan Aviation saw a need to support business aviation customers with dedicated, ready-to-travel turbine engine technicians. A small office, dubbed Engine Rapid Response, was opened in the Dallas area, becoming Duncan Aviation's first mobile engine services launch office. Today, there are more than 30 factory trained technicians in 13 Engine Rapid Response offices located nationwide, 
performing nearly 2,000 AOG and infield events per year. Their long list of capabilities include troubleshooting, routine periodic inspections, vibration surveys, on-the-wing repairs, engine removals and reinstallations, and line maintenance that includes LRU changes and bore scope inspections. Rapid response teams are able to be quickly dispatched to a customer's hangar or AOG location anywhere in the world in as little as 24 hours. Well, that's our program for today. Remember to get comprehensive real-time 24-7 coverage of the latest aviation and aerospace stories anytime at aero-news.net. Remember that Airborne Unlimited is streamed daily Monday through Friday with additional breaking news bulletins for important stories that fall outside of our normal deadlines. Please join us and a growing roster of over 100 outstanding industry associations and organizations every weekday for the best in aviation and aerospace news from the staff of the Aero News Network, the aviation world's most comprehensive news and information resource.